Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. My name is Jesse Kublikonhoff. Behind me I have a solar array system that I put on this house about two and a half years ago. You can check out a video of how I got that solar array system on this house in the description below. So what we're going to be doing today is moving some of the panels around. When I initially talked to the homeowner about this install, she was telling me about how she was going to add an addition, but she never told me that the addition was going to be two stories high. So now that the addition is two stories high, I'm going to have to move some of the panels around, get some of the panels back into the sun. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a roof penetration today. I'm also going to show you some of the racking that I'm using. I'm using a little bit of a different of a racking system that I used, than I used on that previous install. And just a quick shout out to SolarRollers.com. They provided some of the racking that I'm using today, and uh, they're a great educational nonprofit here in Colorado. So I'm going to show you just a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Gives you a little bit better view of what's happening. Where that big gap is right there, that's where the other two panels used to be. And what I'm going to do is install two more of those two other panels that I took off right up there. And um, yeah, that's basically about it. All right, I'm just going to show you guys some of the tools that you need and some of the parts you'll need to do this install. Um, so I'm playing around with first is this solar mount. Uh, this is called the quick mount PV uh, roof flashing. I got four of these. I'd highly recommend getting the hardware that's included with it. Uh, it comes with lag bolts and washers. So you'll need uh, at least four of those if you're putting two panels up, which I'm doing. We're also going to be using uh, this racking system. This is the Unirack solar mount uh, racking system. It's, I think it's way better than that e-beam that I used last time, which was kind of sucky. Um, this has a groove in the top for the hardware, and this groove right here, this side groove is for the mounting of the L-feet. Since I'm doing four roof penetrations, I have four L-feet. I'll put those onto the roof, onto the roof penetrations. And I also got a uh, power drill, definitely need a power drill. To drill through the roof, you're going to need a 7 30 seconds drill bit. Um, this is a, a long drill bit, so you can get into those roof rafters. It's not the normal size drill bit. You'll need a longer one. You'll need a crowbar. Tape measure always helps. And a hammer. A hammer will let you um, test for where the roof rafters are. You can measure where the roof rafters are, but I also do like the sound test also. Um, other racking hardware I got, um, I have end clamps for the, for the racking. I also have um, two mid clamps. And that'll get my two panels up there. That's all the parts I need. It's also good to have a socket set um, to um, get the lag bolts in there. And also for the roof penetrations, I have um, some, some stuff about Ace hardware, some on black top and roof um, sealant, which you'll have to put into the penetration. All right, so we're on top of the roof now. I just wanted to show you what I did. I, I laid out the, um, the four roof penetrations. Um, that's their tentative location. And now I just got to find the, the roof rafters. And since I've already done this um, on the previous install, you know, I know a rafter is right here. And I know a rafter is right here. And I spaced the next rafters kind of down that way. But I also know that there is uh, another rafter 24 inches away from this one. So you can measure and you can also do what I like to do is that um, the hammer test, you can hear it. And let's, let's listen closely. So right there is the rafter. You can hear a difference in the density, you know, right here, it's hollow underneath. Right there, there's a rafter. And that's almost exactly 24 inches away from this previous one, which I already did. So I'm gonna show you the drilling method now too. Okay, so once you get the, the roof flashing in the appropriate location where you think the rafter is going to be, I like to mark it a little bit. And then you're gonna have to get the nails out. and. These roof flashings, you need to take the nails out of this shingle here, and you gotta get the nails out from this shingle here, and this is what the one that's gonna slide up underneath. So you get your handy little roof bar. You 
you got to get that. You know, these shingles have a lot of sticky rubber on the bottom. So you got to get that up. Be careful with it. Yeah, you may get lucky too. There may not be any nails under there. There's a few one right there though. So you can see the nails. You gotta get underneath it. Pull it out. There's the nail. Now we'll see if we can slide it underneath. Perfect. But um, that'd be pretty good. And you want to kind of get it a little bit higher. All right, then remember to mark your hole where you think you're going to be drilling. And I think it's pretty important to remember, you know, if you don't hit your mark, hit the route for the first time, I usually just kind of go a little bit to the left or right and drill again. Um, and put some more sealant in there, of course. All right, so that I could kind of tell that I really didn't hit one right there. It'd be a lot more solid if I did. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit more to the right. Hopefully, I hit one. That time I definitely hit one. Uh, Got to measure closely, but yeah, I'll fill up those holes and um, that's my penetration. Yeah, this is where the caulk comes into play. Make sure you fill up those holes nice and good. Really work it in there. Yeah, work it in there, you know. Yeah, and of course the um, the flashing is going to cover this up, so it's not that important, but it's relatively important. Let these holes be sealed up pretty good. Then put your lag bolt in, you know, you put the washer on, then the nut. Kind of have to remember where your hole is. Crank this down. Get your trusty socket wrench. Crank that puppy down. Nice. That's good. One done. I got three to go. All right, so we got all the roof penetrations done. Uh, once you get one done, the other ones I think are a little easier since you just line up that one with the first one. And then you, now I'm gonna put the L feet on and put the, the bar on. I'm gonna show you how that's done. Here's our L feet. L feet go on there. The washer. Lock nut. And then a nut. And the same thing on the other side. And once again, uh, these L feet should probably be torqued to a specific torque rating. Same thing with the bolts on the on the panels, but I don't have a torque wrench today. So we're just gonna use the old mechanics feel. Now I wouldn't get these too tight just net just yet. Because uh, you're going to want to put the bar on and then possibly might need some adjustments. Yeah, the other bolt's going to go in um, here. And this is what the rail slides on. Put those on, you can slide the bar on. You know, of course, you want it nice and straight, and I wouldn't tighten it up until you get this other bar down. And um, but, but right now, it's just a matter of tightening, tightening the bolts up. So that's about it.
Yeah, so the other method to uh, slide the bar on, guys, you can also just slide the bolts in, which might be a little easier depending on how long your bar is. And these are only seven feet long. And then you can just kind of bolts in and do it like that, which I think might be a little easier. I will say this though, um, you know, YouTube's great, but a technical manual <laughs> is another thing, you know. So make sure you read the technical manual before you install the thing. Yeah, so once you get the um, bars lined up the way you want them, it's time to bolt those things down. All right, so the next step is to deal with inverters. Once again, this is an in-phase micro-inverter system. So these guys are what's creating um, AC electricity right off the panel. So they're converting DC electricity to AC electricity. And these need to be mounted onto the rail like that using some bolts. And then you get some zip ties and you zip tie up all the cables so that they're not hanging on uh, the asphalt roof. All right. And once again, you tighten those um, inverters up. The other thing you want to deal with is the equipment ground. The equipment ground is a, I think it's a number six piece of copper that grounds all the railing and the inverters um, in case of a lightning strike or if there was a short in the system and the equipment was to become um, ungrounded, uh, this will save your butt. And this goes all the way back to the circuit breaker. So that goes, it's gonna go on top of the inverters. And uh, once again, just try to keep it off the roof. And yeah, watch me. All right, so once you get everything zip tied down, uh, you get the equipment ground and then inverters all set up. Last thing to do is put the panels on the racks. Now, and the best way I usually do it, if I do it by myself, I usually put the panels on my head and just climb up the ladder with them. Works all right. Uh, your clips, you know, we just slide in there. And uh, just as an extra safety precaution, I'm gonna go turn off the power. All right, and there's the final two panels up on the roof. I got all the clips on there. There's an end clip, another clip. I left a little bit of a gap right there so you could still walk through. One thing I did want to point out are these uh, mid clamps on these solar mount unirack beams. You gotta really watch out. You know, I had this twisted horizontally and that would have cracked the glass if I would have tightened it down. So. These kind of, they go lengthwise that way. So keep that in mind. Uh, another thing to keep in mind when you're installing these is to, uh, you know, make sure there's no wires hanging on the roof or hanging down onto the roof. You want those wires up by those rails. So that's what where the zip ties come into play. So that's about it. I also want to show you guys that they're actually producing power. I'm going to show you the in-phase software that I use and to monitor these uh, panels. So I'll show you that and um, show you that they're indeed producing power. But yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe and um, keep on rocking out there in the solar world. Comment too on the video if you could and um, I appreciate it. Thanks.